Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, finish my meeting. Can you pick me up? I'm close. Yeah, I can meet you downtown. 8 p.m.? Good. See you there. brings it down out of the sky brilliantly and he'll curl it oh what a goal Okay, it's me again. The first part of the presentation dealt more with the company and with our products. Now I would like to spend some minutes to give you some ideas what AI can do uh, in a car or what it will do in the future. Although you saw this slide already, it's all about electrification. Cars will be electric, cars will be smart, means connected and uh, having big screens, and they will be autonomous, so artificial intelligence will go into all of those areas, and I will give you some ideas in a second. So Byton is not, I think I mentioned this already, is not only a car manufacturer. We want to become uh, a, a mobility service provider, operating cars as platforms, and this based on AI technology. And what is very important to understand, those smart cars are not any longer only driven by customers, by individuals, but this development is driven by societies. Because for the first time in history, those products add value to societies. In the last 130 years, cars added value to individuals, because they brought you from A to B, and uh, you had fun on driving, whatever you want. But they created a burden for societies, pollution, traffic accidents, jams, tra traffic jams, um, and uh, you know, a lot of cars are standing around without being used. Smart, with smart cars, this picture is changing. There's a, uh, there's a component which adds value to societies because the air will be clean, the transportation will be safer, so uh, autonomous driving will reduce traffic accidents dramatically, not completely, but dramatically. Uh, just to, I don't know if you know, in, in China, there are more than 100,000 deaths people from traffic accidents every year, more than 100,000. This number can be reduced dramatically. So transportation itself will be safer, you will reduce traffic jams, and with shared economy, with shared transportation, the number of cars will dramatically be reduced. Because um, you might know or you might not know, the average usage time today of a car worldwide is between 3 and 5%. 3 and 5%. Rest of the time, it just costs money standing around, uh, occupying um, valuable space, at least in, in, in big cities. All this will change with smart car approaches. And therefore, those companies are not any longer by their own. It's not any longer driven by companies and their customers, but it will be driven by societies, by governments, and the cars will be, be become part of a bigger 
digital and smart ecosystems, which means the car manufacturer, the infrastructure manufacturer when it comes to communication infrastructure, and even city planners for smart cities will have to work together and will work together. This is a complete new business approach. And AI can and will help to do so. And in the car, there are basically three different areas where we use AI technologies. One is obviously the UI UX, would be the user interface and user experience, which makes you easier to deal with the, with the whole system. Target is that the system knows what you want. Then uh, smart mobility services. And the third one is you, uh, which is, uh, everybody is talking about during those days, obviously, is autonomous driving. So let's have a look at the first one, the UI UX. We created this big display that I showed you before uh, in our car as a user, multi-dimensional user interface, and it is very much supported by AI functionalities. It is separated in different areas. You can display driving information, you can show videos, you can play your music, you can do a video conference call if you want. You even could do a PowerPoint presentation. And it can be controlled by touch through the display in the middle of the steering wheel. It can be controlled by gesture um, uh, uh, control technologies. And we even have a face recognition camera I'm going to show you in a second, which will identify the user. And the target is, um, in principle, the car can become as intelligent as it knows what you want in the next second. So in principle, in the future, there might be no need to interact with the system any longer. We will not reach this point completely, but AI can help to make it very, very easy to interact with your system. Now, the second thing is all the knowledge, all the data uh, the car is knowing, gaining about you about itself, about its ecosystem, which is working it. And yeah, a lot of those questions on the screen you might know. Uh, so we are out of milk. Um, uh, you will have your seven new emails. Uh, your flight is in two hours from now. And uh, yeah, please pick up the kids from school. So all these questions will come to your car in the future. And the car, as being part of this ecosystem, will know the answers or will know, um, will provide solutions uh, to solve them and, and, and to make it happen. This is something you might experience with your smartphones today already to some degree, and in the future, the car will behave more or less like a big, big smartphone or smart device. When it comes to face recognition technology, some video here, um, you can use this for different aspects. For example, you can use it like you, use, you do with your iPhone, uh, uh, probably, um, to get access to the car. This is one area. Another one is this face recognition camera will recognize you and identify you as a user. Now, you can think about that your whole digital ecosystem, all your music, your videos, your phone connections, are stored under your ID in our cloud. So if you enter a Byton car, being it in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, or in Beijing, the car will download your complete personal configuration. Every Byton worldwide you use will feel like your car. And uh, if you think this further in, and think about a fleet of cars operated, and you have an, an app where you just call it from going from A to B, you enter this car, and it looks like yours, this might be the breakthrough technology then for shared mobility. Then there's another technology we call gesture control. So it's basically a remote control of the big screen with some easy gestures. You can move things around and can, um, can, can change the menu structure just to give an idea what, what, what is possible if you're using AI technologies. The second area is smart mobility services. Um, there are some interesting areas which you might not have on, on, on your screen right from the beginning. The, 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 the car knows about your preferences. The car knows what you like. So it can even help in the sale process, in the sales process, selecting uh, the vehicle style or the, or the colors or the materials you like. It can help in dia diagnostics, because one of the most annoying thing today, if you own a car, is if it has a problem or it just needs a service. You have to deal with appointment. You have to bring it to the service. You have to take care about a lot of things. It don't add, doesn't add value to you. So in the future, this can be done completely by us, by the AI logistics um, behind from the cloud. Then it's about smarter security and safety. 
the cars will be connected between each other. Um, and this means they will exchange information. They know themselves, they know the other status of the other cars, they know uh, the status of the ecosystem, which means the whole transportation will become safer. And the third part I already covered is individualization. Now think about, um, no, sorry. Think about an app which gives you it's very slow. Uh, an access to, to our cars like, like Uber or Didi in China or Lyft is doing today. So you select a Byton car, within some minute it comes to pick you up. You enter this car, within seconds your whole e ecosystem is available. Your phones are connected, you find your music, your videos, all your personal configuration. And it, for the ride, being it uh, two minutes or being it uh, two hours, it will feel exactly like your own car. Then there might be, for many, many people, might be no need any longer to own a car. Because um, if you talk to people today, very much in China, but, but also in the United States here, and to, to younger people, they will tell you, I don't need to own a car. I don't, I don't want to take care of it, to, to, to pay all the fees and to, to, to find the parking space and so on. They just want to have access to a mobility, A to B. They want to have certain, maybe brand, a certain style, maybe luxury. They want to have safety and they want to have the personal experience. They want to feel that is their environment, that where their ecosystem is available. And if you can provide this on a product which is shared, then this in our eyes will be the breakthrough technology for, uh, for, for, for um, mobility, for shared mobility services. And this is what we are working on. So our business will be built first on selling cars, obviously. The second step is we are going to use all those cars as platform to, do, to, to create sales channels to our customers and sell digital content. But uh, eventually, we will be a provider of mobility. We will operate those fleets, fleets of those cars, and sell miles to our customers and not cars any longer. This definitely will be the business model of the future. So then the third area, autonomous driving, this is the most, yeah, maybe most exciting one, at least the most discussed one, because uh, many, many people are talking about autonomous driving, and um, most of them are not very well understand, uh, don't very well understand what they are talking about. Because I'm, I'm asked many times, when will level four or level five be available? And um, it depends what you mean from this question. If you mean, when will it available, be it available all over the world under every condition, then the answer might be never. Um, but the good news is we will not need it everywhere and under every condition. If the answer is, when are we going to see it under specific conditions in pilot areas, maybe in Silicon Valley or in big ch ch cities in China, then the answer might be 2020 or 21. So whatever happens, uh, autonomous driving will change the whole mobility industry completely because the experience of, the, of our users, of our customers, formerly known as drivers, will be very different. You enter the car and you have time. So what you want is not any longer sitting behind the steering wheel and looking for, for this great um, pleasure on standing in a traffic jam for three hours in Los Angeles, but you want to have space, you want to feel well, you want to be connected, at least most of the people, is what they are doing in their spare time. So you want to be part of, of the smart ecosystem. And this is what, what, what our cars will provide. So in 2019, end of next year, when we go to the market in China, we will provide level three autonomous driving technology. This is not complete autonomy, but it works quite well on highways. So it gives you quite good autonomous driving experience on, on highway environments. And we will have some, a test fleet of level four prototypes in 2020. And this car coming in 21 will be the first one which will provide level, complete level four autonomy, at least under certain conditions in certain pilot areas. Maybe in the United States, for sure in China, uh, because uh, China is, is driving uh, this whole autonomous and smart mobility ecosystem very much. The Chinese government really understood that it adds value to societies and there are a lot of policies and boundary conditions are created when it comes to infrastructure, when it comes to 
to subsidies for companies like, like, like ours and when it comes to, let's say, target setting what should be achieved within the next years. So you cannot do those things by your own as a car company. If you, if you try as a car company to develop autonomous driving technology, all the AI behind by yourself, you will fail. This is the reason why we choose strong partners. Uh, our main partner is a company, uh, a startup company from Silicon Valley. It's called Aurora. It was founded from, uh, by, the, by Chris Ermsen, who was the former head of the self-driving program at Google, and Sterling Anderson from Tesla. So they are our partners. Uh, and the, the technology you see in, in, uh, at this car here, the sensor technology, for example, those LIDARs, cameras, this is the current prototype status we have. So it's no fake. This is like the technology look like today. It will hopefully a bit, be a bit smaller and um, for sure cheaper in, in, in the future. But this is where we are. And then autonomous driving will be very much depending from the local conditions. Uh, obviously, the traffic conditions in China are very different from, from, from the US or from Europe. So you will have to, to work with local partners in different countries. And we are partnering with Baidu in China. We are a member of the Apollo platform uh, to get the right um, uh, uh, data and, let's say, application software, which will make this happen in, in China. This one I can do very short because Benoit already did a perfect introduction. This car has basically three messages. One is we as Byton are able to build different cars on one technical platform. This car shares more than 65% of the parts with the M byte you see over there, which is um, a precondition to be profitable and create economy of scales. Second message is we claim design leadership in car or mobility industry in the future. Uh, and the third one is um, this car is designed for autonomous driving level four, like I just mentioned. So to conclude, our philosophy at Byton is not um, better driving experience, but uh, our philosophy is better driving should be better living in the future. This is what Byton is about. And I thank you very much for your attention.